Welcome back to Switch to Linux. I thought we'd do a very fun, different story. Of course, last week we had put the new Linux Mint 22 on this computer, and now what I wanted to do is walk you through some of the early first steps, assuming you are new to Linux. Basically, a few tips to get started and some basics. First, of course, we should get on the internet. So, like any other computer, if you have a look down here in your dock, you can find your network connections. Now, if you do have a wired network, you'll see that. Uh, when we installed this, we were on the streaming computer, which does not have a wireless chip. I did want to try it on a laptop because some people, particularly it was the HP 350, people were saying that the, the um, wireless did not work on that computer. I don't know what the situation is. Of course, as we talked about before, if you have a look over at your drivers under your first steps here, have a look at your drivers, that might actually resolve your issue. I have not had any issues at all on mine. Go ahead and get logged into here. All right, so that should get us logged in, and it looks like we do finally have internet. It tells us that connection is established to our FBI surveillance van, which is right behind me. My apologies for the plane flying overhead. This microphone is not really good to use in an outdoor setting. It picks up too much stuff. I should be using my small ones. I just don't have a real good way to hook that to this computer right now. So uh, hopefully that airplane overhead is not too distracting like it is to me as I'm listening. So, of course, we did our initial setup where we had that welcome screen there. And then on the welcome screen, we walked through the theme settings, just a few other basics. What we wanted to do now is kind of go into a little bit more deeper dive for those particularly that are new to Linux. Uh, you can have a look over at your um, home folder. So if you just pull up your browser, uh, your, um, excuse me, your file manager there, and of course I put it on home here, your home folder in Linux is kind of your go-to place, anything related to your desktop, your documents, your downloads, music, pictures, uh, the public folder, templates, and videos is all here. Now inside of here, if you show all folders, and here on Cinnamon, Control H will show all folders, and uh, Control H uh, will see the hidden files. Now you'll see these like .mozilla, .local, .linux, mint, .icons. These dot .files in Linux are your hidden files. And any settings inside of your applications will probably be in here. So .mozilla is our Firefox profile, our Firefox extensions, all that kind of stuff is right on over here. So you'll see we have a couple different profiles in there uh, from our setup and things. So any other application that you install that you're saving forms of profiles is probably going to be either a dot uh, folder with its name or it could be under a dot config. Uh, there's a couple different places it could be, but they're all going to be right here, which means if you just save a full copy of your home drive, it will save everything, including the settings and application changes you make. Now, Linux Mint does actually have a backup tool here. Uh, we didn't highlight that. Now, the time shift is the one I mentioned I don't really use. That's like system restore points. That will save a backup of your operating system, but not your files. The backup tool by default will save the files, but not the operating system. And so utilizing this one here is going to be an application that you want to do. So you can back up now, you can restore, or you can look at the list of applications that's all on your computer. And uh, you can actually back up these. And this is going to back up. So if I were to install some application and it saves some settings, maybe I'm downloading my emails with Thunderbird or any other application I'm installing and making some customizations to, hitting that backup now button is going to make a copy of those. So you can see here, um, I have installed these three applications. This one here is kind of horrible, but uh, I'm using GVC View in order to show me my beautiful picture here in the middle of the woods. Um, and then we also have our simple screen recorder, which we're using to actually record, record the screen. If I can select or deselect all, go forward. It's going to save all of the settings related to those applications, wherever those happen to be. 
And then you can save that as a single file here or you can move it somewhere else. Um, I don't personally use that one. I just usually just rely on manually backing up individual folders and files. Although the backup tool is a nice one. We did last year, we did a good backup tutorial on Debian and that is absolutely worth uh, looking at as that still is a good way to do backups. So I just wanted to show you here, not backups as much as your home folder, what is in there and how that works. Now, the next thing we want to do is adding and removing applications. So we did talk briefly about the software manager and inside the software manager, we can uh, add different applications and I'm kind of stuck on a trackpad. My apologies. I do not have enough USB ports for running my mouse. <laughs> it's like my, my USB dock is hidden somewhere. So if you wanted to just install some piece of application, you know, of course, just click it over here and then there might be a flat pack version or a system package. With which one of those, I encourage you to do your own research. I personally prefer system packages where they are available. Uh, some people prefer flat packs. I have whole videos talk about the differences between those and snaps and app images. I'll just say I prefer the system packages. It's going to tell you everything else that's going to install, basically all the dependencies, how much is going to be downloaded in total and how much disk space will be used in total. So if you're okay with that, you need to enter your password. So let me go ahead and do that. And since this machine is technically production, I put a more complicated production password on it. So go ahead and do that. And then you'll notice up here in the corner that it is installing this particular application, which is FileZilla. So now it is done. I have the launch or remove option over there. If I go into my menu at this point in time, I should find FileZilla and there it is. And you'll see that newly installed applications that haven't been run are bold in the menu. Now you can click up here and you can show the installed applications instead. And you can see that uh, we have four different applications now. Now it's only going to install applications that are not default to the system itself. So we do have LibreOffice, we do have Thunderbird, we do have a number of other applications in here that are not showing up in this list because they were not installed extra. Some of those here on Linux Mint, this is not the same for every single distribution, but some of these you can right click on Linux Mint and you can uninstall it. I was looking for one particular application, but it looks like they might have actually gotten rid of it for me. It used to be this Redshift application that uh, would give you um, your, uh, you know, gets rid of the blue colors on the screen. I think that's a bunch of hokey theory, so I usually uninstall that. So there's no application here I really want to uninstall necessarily. But if you were to want to get rid of something, you can usually right click it. I have to find something that's not a core application, though. No, don't want to start the calculator. I wanted to show you if you right click in a particular application. Sorry, this trackpad is not a good trackpad. All right, so you can see that you have an uninstall option here on Linux Mint. Um, I've not found that that being universal to Cinnamon itself, just on Linux Mint. Of course, we can also click on any application we have previously installed and once it's done looking under the system information, it'll tell us if there's an update, launch, or we can remove it. Now, there is a big problem on Linux with this software manager, and that is that um, it does not have an option to like purge everything. So if I had changed any settings or this application added some files to the drive, removing it will not remove all those files. So you'd need to run something like in old Windows, like a CCleaner, to find all of those extra files. In Linux, we do have Bleach Bit, which should do that. But I actually prefer the terminal. I know the terminal is scary for some people, but it's worth learning a little bit. Because if we do a sudo apt remove, that tells you to remove an application. Now, if I were to just remove this application here, and uh, so that's called, uh, and hopefully the package name is Camoso. It should be. That'll actually remove it. But if we add this dash dash purge and put a space in front of it, this removes the application and every file it brought with it. We do have to enter our password to do that. It said that's not difficult to do. And you can see here that it's going to remove that. And you can see all of those other applications it's going to remove with it because those are all things that 
are not needed now that this application is being removed. This will also remove configuration files or other things in your home files as well. So um, that's uh, a better way to remove applications if you want to purge all of that data off. So there's installing and removing a few applications. Um, oh, you know what? Before we close that out, there's one more thing I want to show you in there, and that's talking about flat packs. Now, I did talk briefly about flat packs there. And again, I'm not a huge fan of running flat packs if I have another option, but there's some tools that there are not other options. For example, if you need Zoom, um, Zoom is available on Linux on nearly every distribution, but generally it is available as a flat pack. Um, and you can see it as an unverified, I'm not sure why it's an unverified flat pack. I thought Zoom actually produced it. But this is actually the same Zoom that I use everywhere. This is why there is some criticism we talked about in my previous video. There is a little bit of criticism over how Linux Mint is running these. So if you needed Zoom, you would have to enable those and then deal with this. Now, uh, this is one I've used without a problem. Um, I thought that was done by a more reputable company. Maybe it's not. I have no idea. <laughs> but anyway, um, you can look at different applications based on that. If you do get into running flat packs, I'm going to recommend two applications for you. One of those is called Flat Seal. So applications from Flatpak, they are really designed with a lot of security in mind. And sometimes this means that you don't have access to the files you would need or things like that. Flat Seal allows you to actually look at every Flatpak on your system and toggle individual permissions. The only other way to do these, toggling these permissions, is to learn everything in the terminal. And I'm not that committed to learning how to manage Flatpaks on that small of a scale. So I actually don't do that. I just install Flat Seal anytime I'm using Flatpaks. This allows me to toggle network permissions, file permissions, and anything else. Now, flat packs do have that same problem where you can't remove uh, other tools easily. So there's commands you'd have to enter in order to do flat packs. But there is another one called Warehouse. I'd recommend that you install this flat pack as well. What this flat pack does is it manages every aspect of them. You can come in here and you can remove all of those excess files brought to your system by flat packs. And it allows you to see what's there update and do some fine tweaking. So flat seal allows you to manage and toggle your permissions. Warehouse allows you to uh, get in and um, delete extra files and delete extra uh, applications that are not needed. So that is definitely one that you want to do. Uh, as far as uh, other options, let's talk uh, briefly about music. Linux Mint does come pre-installed with an application that is called Rhythmbox. And so looking at Rhythm Box, this really is a nice application. It's not my personal cup of tea, but I do use it particularly because this manages podcasts. So if you are into podcast reading, you can go ahead and you can in, you know, look up all of the podcasts that you might want to uh, find in here. So if I want to, there's browse, let's see, let's add a podcast. So search for a podcast. So let's see if I can find one here. So if you go ahead and just get on in line and do do a podcast here, you can see this is actually my podcast that I do Christian stuff. I have 368 episodes over there. And you can go ahead and subscribe to that. Am I hiding the subscribe button? There should be a... Uh, I, I don't use this enough to remember how all the details work. Uh, there's a button in here. Oh, there it is. Just hit the subscribe button. And then it's just going to give you that feed. And then you'll have the option to go in there and download whichever episodes you want. So it will manage that. Rhythmbox also will allow you to do some management of um, iPhones and things with an extra plugin, which I can't remember if it's installed or not by default. Uh, but we also have the ability of it'll scan your computer for any files. It'll show you uh, your your music library over here. If you have any files on here, it'll show up and you can sort them by things. What I don't like about it is, number one, it's very automatic. And I don't like super automatic things. And it's all just list based. That's not really, I, I kind of want to see the pretty pictures and stuff because, you know, I guess I'm that type of person. So Rhythmbox is good. There are tons of other applications but the one i've been favoring lately uh after my old favorite one uh was um 
uh, was discontinued is Lollipop. Lollipop is a really nice application. It's all graphical. It allows you to get things from the internet and uh, just a really nice, easy to use application for managing all that kind of stuff. And so uh, Lollipop is definitely the one that uh, I would recommend that, uh, that you would use for running music. And the last thing we want to talk about is printers and scanners and things. And I happen to bring out with me my little micro scanner and my uh, printer here. And my apologies, the guy next to me decided to boot up a chainsaw. Hopefully you can't hear that too much. So let's go ahead and I will need to unplug my beautiful camera for this now. So let's go ahead and close my camera and then we will go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and uh, plug the printer in and see what happens. So many printers will work on many Linux distributions out of the box. Um, it does depend on your printer. Look at your different branding names. Um, your uh, brother printers of make all of your drivers available. They are all easy to use. And so you can see, oh, look at this. It finds a new printer. It's configuring our printer. It says, please wait. And now it says it's searching for drivers uh, for the printer. And it says, look, it added a HL uh, 2315D. And that is exactly the printer that we have. So let's go ahead and pull this printer up. And if we double click into here and I can print a test page, it says it submitted the test page and I hear the printer actually whirring up right now as we speak. So without any, uh, without any issues whatsoever, our printer is now spitting out a test page and I got a test page. Very nice. Gives me all my model number and things like that. So I didn't even have to do anything more than simply install. Uh, simply uh, plug the printer in and it set itself up automatically. So that's actually a really nice feature. So we'll go ahead and unplug this. And of course, uh, I have an Epson portable scanner here. So let's go ahead and see what our scanner can do. And last time I checked, it does actually find the scanner. There is a built-in scanning tool built into Linux Mint. So... Uh, I know if I go online, I can download the Linux drivers for this particular scanner out of the box that uh, it will uh, it will automatically configure everything. But you can see right there, ES50, that's the, exactly the scanner. Let's go ahead and scan with it. So let me go ahead and push the scan button. And we're just going to scan our printer test page. I think I did it upside down. Oh, no, I did it right. <laughs> I couldn't remember if you had to go upside down or right side up on this. So there you have it. So there you go. Out of the box on Linux Mint, um, I didn't have to mess with anything. You hit this button over here. This is kind of your crop to size, and you just crop to whatever size your page actually is. And then over here, we have the option to save the file. There's some other options over here. We can email print. We can reorder pages things like that. So this is just the built-in scanner utility. Here's our default. There's a PDF. We have JPEG, PNG, and WebP compressed files. So we can save these guys. We'll go ahead and save that right to documents. And we'll have a look. So obviously some of the, some of the things, there you go. There's our scan file. Let's double click that. And there is our printer test page for our HLL 2315D series laser printer. All of these, I mean, this is just right out of the box from yesterday. Um, we plugged the printer in, it found it. We plugged our scanner in, it found it. We plugged in our webcam, it found it. And out of the box, Linux Mint works really, really well. This is why I recommend Linux Mint. So hopefully this was a interesting little video if you're a little nervous about trying out Linux. Hopefully this gives you the encouragement to give it a try. Particularly here, this is Linux Mint 22. So with that, guys, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more of this content. Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.